But we've been hearing about all these incidents today that have happened across America, uh, horrific violence, increasing Islamophobia, uh, Arab hate. And uh, they typically end in violence, but sometimes it's not just the violence, but it's also the threat of violence that forces us to then take inaction or to silence us. Uh, as many of you probably have been doing, I've been going to many of the protests throughout DC. One time coming back from one of the protests, uh, coming home on the Metro, my wife and my one-year-old child met me there to walk me home. And a car pulled up next to us and I thought I heard some racial slurs. His music was very loud, and so my wife said, no, it's just his music's on loud. I think he's just singing along with it. You're just hearing things. You're being paranoid. So we kept walking, and uh, about a couple blocks from our house, uh, he pulled into an alleyway, which cuts off the street on our intersection, rolled down his window, and began to spew more racial slurs. Racial slurs are one thing. What he ended with, and as a reminder, I was with my wife, my one-year-old child, and my dog, uh, he threatened to kill us, and he threatened to make sure that we were no longer living there. Uh, of course, my first action was to move my kid behind us, uh, and I tried to follow him to get his license plate. Uh, we reported it to the police. It was labeled a hate crime. They unfortunately never found him. But one of the impacts it did have was we did take the Palestinian flag down off our home as we were right next to it. We had to take down the Free Gaza signs. And he forced us into silence, at least for a temporary period. I won't lie to you, I never thought something like this would happen to me. I live in a pretty close-knit community, and it still happens. So uh, it's painful, but it's a reminder that what we are doing is only a fraction of the price that we pay.